Let there be a revival in the land. Let sons and daughters be born again. We're ready, Lord. We're ready for an outpouring of your power. We're ready for an outpouring of your spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Clap your hands. Make a joyful noise unto him. Hallelujah. I'm ready for what God wants to do. Amen. God is ready to move. God is ready to pour out his spirit. God is ready to heal somebody. Hallelujah. All we have to do is bring our thoughts into captivity. Hallelujah. When we get plugged into him, hallelujah, great things begin to happen. Amen. Praise God. We want to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Let's just pray for all those that are sick amongst us that God will touch them and heal them. Not going to take the time to call everybody's name tonight, but I'm sure you have somebody to pray for. Let's just go before the Lord. Ask God to meet every need tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus tonight, we humbly come before you and we realize, God, with us, things are impossible. But with you, nothing is impossible. Possible. We pray tonight, God, touch those that are sick and afflicted in body tonight. For you said, by your stripes that we are healed, command healing virtue to go forth and touch all of our brothers and sisters and our family members and even those that are not part of our family members. Pray that you would touch them and strengthen them, heal them and lift them up, God. Take power, take dominion, take authority, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Those that need a door open. Those that need finances tonight. Lord, you said, I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging for bread. I pray tonight, God, make a way. Provide in every life and in every situation. Open the doors that you want open and close the doors that you want closed. We just give you the praise tonight, Lord. And we give you the thanks tonight in the wonderful and the mighty name of Jesus. Let everybody say amen. Clap your hands. Make a joyful noise. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The Lord is good. Amen. And he never fails us. There's a scripture that says God or Je Jesus never fails. Amen. Aren't you glad of that tonight? Praise God. Amen. Praise God. We're going to get ready and receive our offering. And as you're preparing, just quickly, a couple of announcements. Children's Zoom meeting for parents this Saturday at 2 p.m. 
see Brother Akil and Sister Chloe. Amen. Those of you that are parents, they'd like you to sign on through Zoom and have a meeting with them about your children in Sunday school. Amen. Praise God. God is doing good things in Sunday school. Amen. Looking forward to all that's going to happen. Amen. Also, on Sunday at 4 p.m., it's hyphen Sunday. Amen. All of you that are of hyphen age, there will be a fellowship at my house. Sister Janelle's in charge of that. Amen. Feel free, amen, to come by and be a part of that. Amen. And then starting this Sunday, say Sunday. Sunday, 21 days of prayer and fasting. Amen. This is an all-church Daniel fast. Amen. Praise God. Of course, if you want to abstain from everything, you're welcome to do that. Amen. But we're asking you to at least do the Daniel fast. That's every day for 21 days. Amen. The prayer line will be open, our Zoom prayer line. And Brother uh, uh, Little was in charge of that Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. and 8 a.m., or 8 p.m. rather, 6 a.m. and 8 p.m., there will be prayer on Zoom. Amen. And if you'd like uh, some fasting guidelines of what you can eat and not eat, my wife's made some copies and left them up here at the altar next to the offering basket. Feel free to pick those up. I'd like to also remind the church that if you've not attended a basic 101 Bible class, brother and sister Valerie are starting one, I think, this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. So we invite you to join in their class with them. Amen. You will grow, you will be fed, amen, and you will be blessed, amen. So those are the announcements. Let's pray over the offering. You can march and come and give as they sing. Man, Father, we thank you for your blessings and your goodness. We pray that you would bless the gift and the giver tonight. Let all the needs be met. We just lift you up and we glorify your name. And we pray, Lord, bless this offering for the use of the kingdom. Add souls as you see fit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. As they sing another song, come and give to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Victory is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Somebody needs to do that. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I got a little echo up here, please. Amen. Somebody knows how to operate this thing. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Just turn it on me only. Praise God. Good to have Brother Clark back with us tonight. God bless him. Amen. That's good. Amen. We're happy that uh, him and his wife both have tested negative. Amen. For the COVID. So that means God has touched them and healed them. So we appreciate God returning them back to us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Have your Bibles tonight. We're going to begin a brand new series called Christian Living. Amen. Christian Living. And I want to direct your attention to Romans chapter 13 and begin with verse 11 and read through verse 14. Amen. Romans chapter 13 verse 11, and uh, it's on the screen in case you don't have your Bible. How many brought their Bible to church? Not too many amens. <laughs> what would we do if the screen didn't work? Amen. I don't know how you were taught, but I was taught this is my sword. So you don't want to go into battle without your sword. Amen. Praise God. Verse number 11, it says, And that knowing the time that now it is high time, say high time, to awake out of sleep. There's a lot of folks sleeping today. Amen. Some of you are sitting on your couches asleep. Amen. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Amen. Put on the armor of light. Jesus is light. Amen. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on, say put on, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Amen. I want to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray one more time. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for our salvation. We're, we're happy, Lord, that you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, that you have endued us with power from on high. You have cleansed us from our unrighteousness, and you have put your spirit on the inside of us. Help us to walk worthy, oh God. Help us to walk uprightly before you. Help us to be a shining light in a darkened world. Help us to be the church that you have called us to be. We pray not our will, but thine be done in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. I don't believe that I need to tell any of us that we are living in a dark time. Amen. We are living in the age before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll just say it again, and I'll, I'll just reiterate, I believe there's nothing standing in the way of the second coming of God. Amen. I believe that Jesus could come at any hour, at any minute, at any day. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's imperative tonight that we as Christians are ready to meet him. Amen. I want to be ready. How about you? Amen. And so it is tonight. Hallelujah. The Bible instructs us to awake out of our sleep, awake out of our slumber, Awake out of our laziness, if you will. Awake out of our spiritual, amen, uh, 
blindness, if you can say it that way. Hallelujah. And realize that we are living in the last day and we are living in the last hour before the second coming of our Lord and Savior. It's not a day to sit on the couch and go to sleep. It's not a day to lay down and act like everything's, amen, going to be all right. But it's a day to pray like we've never prayed before. It's a day to fast like we've never fasted it before. It's a day to know that God is on the throne and God, even in the middle of the darkness, is able to still do exceeding and abundantly above all that we think or ask. Amen. So the, Paul writes and he says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Amen. Hallelujah. I am prefacing all this by saying, amen, that we're not talking about the new birth right now, but we are addressing, or Paul was addressing the saints of God who have already been born again. Amen. He's talking to the church that's already repented of their sins, already been baptized in his name, and already been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Too often, we as Christians, we like to check the boxes off. I repented. I got baptized. I got the Holy Ghost. And then we pat ourselves on the back and act like that's all we got to do. I've made it. I'm in. That's it. Over and done with. But I want to remind us tonight that repentance and water baptism and the infilling of the Holy Ghost or the new birth, as we like to call it, amen, is only a pre prerequisite to going to heaven. You've not gone to heaven yet. None of us have made it to heaven yet. Amen. So all that the new birth has done is put us in the race. Amen. We've got to start to run like we've never ran before. Amen. He said, press towards the mark for the prize in the high calling of Christ Jesus. There's another scripture that talks about don't look to the left and don't look to the right. And certainly don't go, look, turn around and look where God brought. Amen. Go back to the things God brought you out of. But keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes upon the King of Kings. Keep your eyes upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a singleness of purpose. Have a singleness of mind. Know th that God has brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And if he has brought you out of darkness, why would you ever want to go back? Amen. So when you have experienced the new birth, you have only begun to live. Amen. The Greek word uses a word that literally means provision, plans, or foresight. Amen. When you talk about putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Greek word means provision, God's provision, God's plans, God's foresight, God's forethought. Amen. So instead of letting our sinful nature plan ways to satisfy its sinful lust, amen, hallelujah, or our sinful desires, we must actively resist the dominion, hello, of sinful lust, amen, and kill the deeds of the flesh. Hello, amen. I've got to kill my sinful desires, I've got to kill my sinful ways. I've got to kill my sinful deeds, and I must come alive in the things of the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. That's how, that's what he means by putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. So let me just say it this way. Amen. I must let the old man die. Where did the old man die? It died in the waters of baptism. 
The Bible says, when I came up out of that water, that I am a new creature in Christ Jesus, and the old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become brand new. Amen. Amen. Now that I've come up out of the water, I need to worship him in spirit and in truth. And he said that if I would obey him and go down in his name, that he has promised to fill me with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And if you haven't got the Holy Ghost, just hang on. God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. It's a promise of God. Amen. Praise God. And so when God fills you with the Holy Ghost, the Bible says in Acts 1 and 8, that ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Hallelujah. To be a witness, to be a lighthouse, to be a testimony, to tell other men and women that he brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light that he has empowered you that he has changed you he's changed your heart he's changed your mind he's changed your actions he's even changed your looks somebody say praise the lord you're a beautiful person because you're hallelujah one of christ's kids you're a child of the king of kings you're a child of the lord of lords Hallelujah. He's bought you with his precious blood. You are not your own any longer, but now you belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So if I belong to the King, guess what? You don't come into the throne room just any old way you want to come. Even the Queen didn't come into the throne room whenever she wanted. Hello, go back and look at history. Amen. Look at the story of Esther. Amen. She was nervous about going to see her own husband. Amen. Didn't know if he would receive her because guess what? If he didn't hold that scepter out there, amen, she could be killed. Amen. Hallelujah. But God has made us heirs to the throne room of heaven. Praise God. Somebody say amen. amen. So my point tonight is we need to put off the old man and put on the new man. So if I talk about Christian living, I'm talking about putting off the old man and coming alive in the new man. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1 through 3, it says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual... Paul talking again, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. He said, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and division, and ye are carnal and walk as men." Hello, praise God. So Paul was writing to the Corinthian church, and he says, I'd like to teach you some deeper things in the word of God. I'd like to bring you to a higher level. But he's saying, I can't do it because you still got envy in your heart. You still got bitterness in your heart. You still got jealousy in your heart. Amen. There's still divisions amongst you. And he said, these things should not be. Because we are all part of the body of Christ. Can I just remind us tonight that if we end up talking about our brothers and sisters, you're, amen. Well, if we talk about one another, we're talking about our own family. You're talking about your brother. You're talking about your sisters. Amen. And, and that creates jealousy and envy and strife and division. Amen. And Paul says... When you do those things, you act as carnal people. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't think I need to sit here and talk to us tonight about what sin is. Most of us know what sin is. Amen. There's, I have found out that there's a lot of newcomers that don't know what sin is, but I'm talking to the church tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. We realize it's a sin to cuss. It's a sin to drink alcoholic beverages. It's a sin, amen, to 
to, uh, to, amen, have fornication and adultery. Amen. And I could go on and list that murder is a sin and stealing is a sin and, and uh, you know, looking upon another and lusting in your heart is a sin. Coveting somebody's goods is a sin. Hallelujah. And so we need to come out from that sinfulness and come alive in the spirit of God. And so how do we do that? Well, naturally, we don't do it by our own ability, but we need the gift of the Holy Ghost to give us power over that sinfulness. I cannot live an overcoming life without the power of God. That's why it's imperative that I am filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because without the Holy Ghost in me, I do not have power to live right. Hello. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 3 and 18, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. To grow in, in grace and in knowledge. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know. I guess I gave you the wrong scripture there. Amen. But anyway, don't pay attention to the screen. The, the scripture might be Second Peter. I don't know. Amen. But grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So how are we going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm going to grow in grace, and I'm going to grow in knowledge of the Lord. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word of God. Amen. Why is it important to come to Thursday night Bible study? Because you hear the word of God. Amen. There's been plenty of times that I didn't think I got anything out of the service, but down the road or down during the week, all of a sudden I begin to realize I heard a word from God. Hallelujah. And that word all of a sudden comes alive in my soul at the time that I need it. And I feel faith begin to rise. Hallelujah. And I can resist the devil. And the Bible says the devil has to flee. Praise God. So I grow in God by his grace and also by knowledge. How do you get knowledge? Well, amen, I already gave you one of it. It says, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And, and Brother McCall did an excellent job on Sunday talking to us about faith. Amen. We need to grow in faith. Amen. And God, the unique thing about God is God brings us from faith to faith. So when you arrive at one level of faith, guess what? There's another level of faith that God wants to take you to. And all my years of living for God, I've never can say I have arrived. There's always another level that God wants to take us to. Amen. And then Hebrews 12:14. It says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. Holiness without. Amen. If, I don't have, if, I, if we're going to have fellowship with the holy God, guess what? We have to become holy because God does not have fellowship with darkness. Amen. God separates himself from darkness. He's the light of the world. He's, at a, he, he's a light that shines in the middle of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen. If we have Jesus in us, there's going to be a light that's going to shine in us. Amen. Hallelujah. And other people are going to see it. Amen. My wife goes to work on a Monday morning, and you know how she is. She's kind of bouncy, you know. And they kind of look at her when she walks on the job and like, what rock did you crawl out from under? You know, they're all in there, oh, I just made it to work today. 
Well, guess what? I just kind of think that's how all of us ought to act. When we go to work, we ought to let the joy of the Lord be our strength. We ought to walk in with a smile on our face, not complaining that we're there, not mumbling because, oh, it's Monday. Amen. You ought to thank God you got a job. Amen. You ought to thank God that God has been faithful and God has provided and God has made a way when other people don't have any way. There's food on your table. There's clothes on your back. There's a roof over your head. Almost every one of you got a car that you can drive. I'm here to tell you, you got something to be thankful for. Thank you, Jesus. You know why she can go in there? Because the joy of the Lord is her strength. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit began to manifest in the heart of a Christian. Amen. If you really have the Holy Ghost, amen, there's going to be some joy in your life. Amen. There's going to be some peace in your soul. Amen. There's going to be, amen, some temperance in your spirit. And you're going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. What is that? The gifts of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance. Amen. And I'm sure I left a couple couple out, but I want to tell you, there should be some manifestation of some fruit in your spirit. Amen. So while the rest of the world is mumbling and complaining, you're singing hymns. Amen. You're saying, great is my God. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The thoughts and the meditations of my heart shall continually be upon him. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and I will be glad. Amen. You don't have to wear a lapel pin that says I'm a Christian. You just need to let your light shine. That's what God wants. Amen. Amen. So I want to remind us that even after we have received the new birth of experience, there's still things that we need to do for us to grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what I'm trying to say is living for God is a progressive work. Hello? You hear that? Living for God is progressive. Amen. Amen. That means I haven't attained. I can't sit down and fold my arms and act like everything's going to be all right. I got to continue to fight the fight of faith. I got to put on the whole armor of God. I got to stand like a, a warrior and fight the enemy. Hallelujah. And I got to let my light shine as I do it. Amen. And really what being... A progressive work means means that I got to become more like Jesus. Amen. Less like the carnal man and more like Jesus. You know, if you got somebody on your job that rubs you the wrong way and you react to them the same way they act towards you, you're no better than they. Amen. But the scripture says, pray for them that despitefully use you. Pray for those that speak all manner of evil against you. Amen. That's what being a Christian is. Amen. Being able to pray for your enemies and love your enemies and let the light of the Lord Jesus Christ shine through. Becoming more like Jesus. So as I said, living for God means that I am becoming more like him. So we know that God is holy. Amen. I cannot talk about the characteristics of God without talking about his holiness. Amen. God is holy. His very character is holy. Amen. And what does holiness mean? It means that there is a perfection and purity. So God has called you and I as Christians or children of his 
to a place of purity and to a place of perfection. I don't know about you, but I've not become perfect yet. I am still striving to be more like my God. And I realize that the only way that I can do it is to let the carnal man die and let the spiritual man live. Amen. So God is holy. And holiness includes both the concepts of being separated unto him and dedicated unto him. Hello? Any of us can say, oh, I love Jesus. I, I see a world full of people that claim to be Christians. But their fruit doesn't bear witness of what's in their spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So... Hallelujah. I need to separate myself unto God. God has called every one of us to separate ourselves from this world and dedicate ourselves to him. Amen. How do I do that? By hearing the word. Amen. And by reading the word and through prayer and dedicating myself unto him, growing in faith and growing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why, amen, if you are a, if you've been in the church for 10 years and you're no further along in your Christian experience than you were the first night you got the Holy Ghost, then there's something wrong with your experience. Amen. The Bible says, he that hungereth and thirsteth after righteousness shall be filled. Amen. There should be a hunger in your spirit. There should be a thirst for more of God. There should be a desire to be in the presence of God. Amen. I shouldn't have to call all of you up and beg you back to church. There ought to be a desire in your heart and there ought to be a desire in your spirit that, hey, take this whole world. I got to have more of Jesus. Because I'm separated unto him. And I'm dedicated unto him. And then Paul writes in Romans 12, 1. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, God expects it. God expects us to present ourselves to him. He expects us to lay the old man down and die to the old carnal ways of doing things and to come alive in the spirit. He expects us to bear some fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I said he expects us to bear fruit. Love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and meekness. Temperance. You're always flying off at the handle. You're always angry. That's not the fruit of the Spirit. That's the carnal man. You need to die to that spirit of anger and come alive in the spirit of temperance. And it only happens as you submit yourself to the will of God. Amen. He says... And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. God wants to change the way we think. He said, the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit, for they are foolishness unto him. He said, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. So when you get ready to cuss out your neighbor, you think that's what Jesus would do? You better learn to bite your tongue. Amen. He said we're going to give an account for every thought that we have. So if I even think about cussing out my neighbor, I've already sinned. 
And I need to get on my knees and I need to ask God to forgive me. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. It's all right until I get down to where we live. Amen. If I just always, let's shout and praise the Lord. Yeah, I like that part. But when I talk about loving those that hate you, praying for those that do all manner of evil against you, amen, loving your neighbor as yourself becomes a little more challenging, doesn't it? Amen. He says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God has a will for each and every individual in this building. Amen. As you present yourself to God, as you submit yourself to God, as you separate from the world and dedicate yourself to God, then God reveals himself to you. The reason some of us don't know what God wants us to do is because we refuse to submit ourselves to him. Hallelujah. So we must pursue holiness. He said, without holiness, we're not going to even see him. Amen. So we, it, it is to our advantage that we pursue holiness. I got to see Jesus. Amen. I got to live a new way. The battle is against the evil one. Amen. Hallelujah. And only because of the grace of God can we win that battle. Amen. The grace of God gave you the Holy Ghost. The grace of God brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. You didn't earn it because you got good enough to get God. But you got God to get good. Amen. Because without him, I can do nothing. But when I got him, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. Amen. So, as we are living in a darkened world, and we all realize it's darkened. Amen. There's a great need in our hour for men and women, Christians, saints of God, to separate themselves from this worldly system and dedicate themselves to God's system. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, he says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Now, you ought to talk right, but that word conversation is not really, if you look it up in the Greek, it's not really talking about your conversation. It's talking about your actions, the way you live. Amen. Be holy in the way you live. Be holy. Amen. Don't, you know, a lot of people will come to church and they'll praise God and go out and live like the devil. That's not being holy. That's being a double-minded man. Amen. Amen. And verse 16, he said, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. God is holy. So if God's very nature is holy, and what happened in the Garden of Eden? Adam and Eve separated themselves because of sin and their disobedience to God's word. So sin separates. So the only way that man could be reunited with God was for us to become obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, many are made righteous. We are made righteous not because of what we have done, but we have been made righteous because of what he did. 
Hallelujah. He went to the cross. He shed his blood on the cross. He paid the penalty for your sin and for my sin on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. It took a sin sacrifice. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus was the lamb or the sacrifice slain from the foundation of the world. It was in the mind of God to go to the cross of Calvary and pay the penalty that you and I could not pay. Hallelujah. Where I am so grateful today and I am so thankful for that blood because I have said over and over again, I would shut my Bible and I would quit preaching if I didn't believe in the blood that cleanses and the blood that separates and the blood that sanctifies and the blood that washes away my sin. Praise God. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. And so God fills us with his spirit and he separates us from this worldly system. Now I become that new creature. I become that child of the king. Hallelujah. You know what happened to me? And it'll happen to you too if you let it. Amen. All of a sudden... I didn't want to do the things I used to do any longer. I didn't want to hang out with the people I used to hang out with. I wanted to come to church. I wanted to be in the presence of Jehovah. Why? Because in, pres in his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. I can't get enough of him. I want more of him. I got to have more of him. I hunger for him. I thirst for him. I want more of him. I want more of his power. I want more of his anointing. I want to have more fellowship with him. Oh, take this whole world. Amen. I'm here to tell you the, the the world is getting ready to end and Jesus is coming after a church, a blood-bought church, a people without spot and a people without blemish and a people that's looking for his return, a people that know their God, a people that worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why I can't sit home and have church. I got to come to church and get in the presence of Jehovah. Praise God. He brought me out of darkness. <laughs> I can't help it. It's the pastor coming out in me. Praise God. But I look at some of y'all's Facebook pages, and I'm disgusted at what I see. Amen. Some of you look like the world. Some of you are doing things that the world does. Amen. I've even seen some of you in nightclubs. God forbid he brought you out of darkness. How can you go back to the sinful things that he brought you out of? I'm here to tell you, you better repent and you better get down on your knees and you better get a hold of God because the trumpet's going to come and sound and you're going to get left behind. It's a warning to you that uh, tonight, hallelujah, don't let your light go out. Listen to the, 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 the story of the virgins. Hey Amen. There was only five ready when the bridegroom came. Don't let the oil burn low. The oil always is represented in Scripture as the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you're not full of the Holy Ghost, you're not going because if you don't have the Holy Ghost dwelling in you, you don't have the power to get up off of this earth. He said, the trumpet's going to sound. The dead in Christ are going to arise. And we, which are alive and remain, we're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. I'm just going to be frank tonight. Too many in this church are living carnal. Too many in this church are doing things that you shouldn't be doing. Amen. He said, come out from the amongst the world. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. He said, and I will receive you. It's not a day to act like the world. It's not a day to talk like the world. It's not a day to look like the world. It's a day to come out of the world. It's a day to get full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. You've got to love God 
with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Amen. We've got to separate ourselves from the old ways of life. Amen. The choice is yours. I can't make you. And God won't even make you. But if you'll separate yourself to him and dedicate yourself to him, the blessings of your, your his blessings are yours. The kingdom is yours. Whatever you ask for in his name, it shall be done. That doesn't mean claim, name it and claim it, but amen. If you're really walking with him, you're going to ask for things according to his will. Amen. So holiness tonight means that I have to sacrifice my desires and my will. Amen. We must present ourselves in a manner that's acceptable to God. I want to say that again. We must present ourselves in a manner that is acceptable to God. The Bible clearly tells us what God likes and it tells us what God doesn't like. And it teaches us about the practices and the attitudes that God accepts and those that he expects of his people. Hello? So when he gives us the Holy Ghost, he gives us supernatural power to live a life above sin. Hello? He gives you power to live above sin. You don't have to sin a little bit every day. For those that come to church and repent at the altar and go out and do it again, that's called willful sinning. And if you are a willful sinner, there is no repentance because God knows the intent of your heart. Ooh, hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost will bring conviction and will bring impressions uh, to your spirit, amen, and to your conscience. You don't need me to follow you around and say, that's wrong, that's okay, or that's wrong. Because God gave you a conscience. Amen. And you know before you do it whether it's right or wrong. I've had people come and say, is it okay if I do this, Pastor? They knew it was wrong before they ever came and asked me. Amen. Then I've got other people that are doing things and saying, well, I'd rather ask forgiveness than to ask permission. God forbid. God knows your heart. Amen. God knows your heart. Amen. So what am I saying? I'm saying the Bible has got to become our final authority. Amen. I'll say it again. The Bible has to become our final authority for Christian living. Amen. And the Spirit enables us to make the right kinds of decisions. The carnal man never makes the right kind of decisions. Only the spiritual man. So we got to allow the Spirit to lead us. And how do we do that? We do that by submitting to God, separating ourselves from the world and submitting ourselves to God and dedicating ourselves to God. And then the Spirit will lead us. But first, we got to submit ourselves. The Bible says the devil will flee for, from us when we lift up a standard against us. But the beginning of that scripture said, submit yourselves to God. You got to first submit yourselves to God before the devil's going to flee. I've seen people trying to cast out demons when they had a demon themselves. <laughs> God forbid. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't even, even need to talk about that. Praise God. <laughs> I've heard a lot of folks over the years say, well, pastor, God hasn't convicted me of that. So, hello, have you ever heard that? <clears throat> Especially when I talk about living holy and dressing holy. I don't see it that way, Pastor. Can I tell you it don't matter how you see it? 
Amen. It doesn't even matter how I see it. If it's in the word, it's settled. I said, if it's in the word, it's settled. <laughs> God hasn't convicted me of that, Pastor. Amen. As if to say they're not required to obey the word because they disagree with it. Guess what? The devil didn't agree with the word either. And he isn't going to heaven. Well, what? He was the disobedient one. He was kicked out of heaven because of his disobedience. Mm. Now, I don't know. I'm going to say something that some of you may not agree with, but I think I can prove it in the scripture anyway. Hallelujah. But, you know, it's not so much the act that you perform. You can tell a lie. It's, it's not the sin isn't so much in the in the in what you said. The sin is in your disobedience. All sin can be grouped in to one word, disobedience. And that's the very thing that Satan was kicked out of heaven for. I'll, I'll go one step further. You can kind of categorize sin into three categories. The pride of life. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye. Amen. Almost all sin can fall into those three categories. Maybe I'll teach you on that some night, but I'll go on. Praise God. Amen. We cannot avoid obeying something in the word of God on the basis that we do not feel a personal conviction regarding the matter. Did you get that? We cannot overlook or not obey something that's clearly in the word of God on the basis that we don't see it that way or we don't have a conviction on the matter. So, I don't have time to go into all this, but we'll get into some of this a little bit deeper. But, you know, I had somebody one time ask me, well, pastor, is it wrong to smoke marijuana? <laughs> well, I can't go to a scripture in the Bible and says, thou shalt not smoke marijuana. But I can go to a principle that says that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And that whatever I put in this temple, amen, I'm going to be held accountable for. The Bible says destroy this temple, not to destroy this temple. Amen. Hallelujah. So the principle is there. There may not be a thou shalt not. But all we're doing is trying to find a way to do what we want to do. Amen. That's certainly not separating ourselves from the world and dedicating ourselves to the, to the Lord. What it is doing is we're trying to see how close I can live to the world and still go to heaven. Too many of us are trying to live... On the edge or on the fence, I like to say. Amen. You ever got on you ever been in a field and sat on top of the fence? It doesn't take much to fall off of a fence. A strong wind can blow you to one side or the other. Amen. And too many Christians are straddling the fence, trying to see one foot in the kingdom of God and one foot in the world. You'll never be a victorious Christian living on the fence. And you better hope you're on the right side of the fence when the Lord comes. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Amen. So holiness is maintained only by a love for God. I don't have a problem to live holy because I love him. 
I love him with all my heart. I love him with all my mind. I love him with all my soul. Amen. If he says, hey, do this and don't do that, I'm going to say yay and amen, Lord. I want to present myself to you a living sacrifice. I want your blessings in my life. I want your power in my life. I want your anointing in my life. I don't want to live on the fence. I want to get so deep in this thing that hell could never pull me away from the Lord. Amen. The Bible tells us that even, no devil in hell, the principalities and the powers of darkness, the rulers of wickedness, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Praise God. So I love him and I serve him because I love him. Nobody's holding a gun to my head and making me live right. Amen. I serve him and I, I, I do the things that I do because I love him. We as leaders cannot force you to live holy. I've said it many times. God never called me to be a policeman and come to your house and make sure you're doing right. If you don't have enough of the love of God in your heart to live right, all my policing isn't going to do a bit of good. Holiness must be found in the heart. I want to become more like him. So the process takes place through teaching the word of God and through the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John 14 and 23, he said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him and will come unto him and make our abode with him. Verse 24 says, he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. When we refuse to keep the word of the Lord, we don't really, you can say I love God with all you want, but you don't really love him because you don't keep his commandments. Amen. He said, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father which sent me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. If I really love God, I'm going to keep his word. Amen. He said his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Amen. First John chapter 2, verse 3. Amen. He says, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Amen. Verse 4, he, he that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Amen. If I don't keep God's commandments, the truth's not in me. I'm a liar. And the Bible clearly tells us that all liars are going to have their part in the lake of fire that burns forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Verse 15 in that same chapter, he said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Amen. If I love the things in the world more than I love God, it don't matter if it's sinful or not. If I love going on vacation more than I love God, then I got my priorities wrong. Hello? Nothing wrong in going on vacation, but if you love it more than you love God, then there's something wrong with it. You love to golf more than you love to come to church, then there's something wrong with it. If you love to go to the mall and go shopping more than you love to come to church and be in God's presence, then there's something wrong with it. If you love to sit at home on your couch and not come to church because you're lazy, then there's something wrong with it. You're giving in to your flesh instead of giving in to that. That's right. I'm going to preach it hotter than I've ever preached it before because guess what? God is coming. God is coming. And if you get tired of me talking to you about coming to church, you might as well switch me off because I'm going to talk more and more and more about it because I'm hoping to stir something in your spiritual soul that you'll get up off of that couch and you'll come to church and you'll serve God the way you're supposed to serve God. God. 
Because I'm going to tell you, some of you are going to sit at home and dry up spiritually. And if the trumpet sounds, you're not going to heaven. And you can like me or don't like me. I don't really care. Amen. I'm mad at the devil because the devil has deceived some of you. Amen. The devil has deceived some of you into thinking you're all right sitting at home and sitting on the couch and watching us on Facebook. I'm about ready just to turn Facebook off. Amen. I, I should have took all the money I spent on cameras and put it on missions. Oh, hallelujah. The pastor's upset tonight. No, I'm just mad at the devil because he's cheating you out of an experience. Amen. He's cheating you out of, amen, fellowship with God's people. He's cheating you out of being in the presence of Jehovah. He's cheating you, amen, from hearing and experiencing the word of God. Amen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We must not imitate the world. Hello? We as Christians, we must not imitate the world. The question should not be how closely, amen, I can get by with something, amen, or what is the least that I can do and still please God. But we should be asking, how can I draw as close as possible to God as I can? Amen. I don't want to act like the world. I don't want to talk like the world. I don't want to look like the world. He brought me out of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. We should exercise self-control and restraint. Our flesh, amen, always should be in subjection to the spirit. Amen. That means you got to bite your tongue sometimes. That means sometimes you got to pray through because of your attitude. Amen. That means that if you've got all against your brother, you're not just going to ignore and act like it's not there. You're going to go to your brother and sister. You're going to make the thing right. You're going to get peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God has called us to be peacemakers. God has called us to forgive one another. Our, the Christian attitude towards sin, amen. You ought to have an attitude towards sin. Amen. Hello? And that attitude comes to us because of the Holy Spirit living in us. In other words, I got to learn to hate what God hates and love what God loves. Amen. So if we are truly Christians, that is, if I am truly going to be Christ-like, then we cannot live as sinners at the same time. I can't do sinful things if I'm going to be pleasing to God. I can't go to the bar and hang out. I can't go to the dance club. There's some things I can't wear. Ooh, hallelujah. Why? Because I want to be like Jesus. Amen. Did you know that you can lose the Holy Ghost? Now, I know some folks don't believe that. They believe once saved, always saved. But the Bible is very clear that light can't have fellowship with darkness. So if you go out and you start living like the devil, honey, you ain't got the Holy Ghost no more. Because God's not going to dwell in a temple that's unclean. Mm. I got scripture, Romans 11 and 2 Peter 2. I'm not going to read it tonight, but amen. Too many of us are living too close to the world and doing the things that the world is doing, amen, and we have lost our first love for the Lord. And this is one preacher that's saying, you better come back to your first love. 
You better come back and repent of your sin and get right with God or the trumpet's going to sound and you're going to get left behind. The scripture tells us we are called to be saints. Amen. So ask yourself, would a saint do this? Would a saint act like this? Would a saint say this? Would a saint look like this? Hello? We're called to separate ourselves to God, the Holy One. And we're called of God to fulfill His purpose, not our purpose. I, I could just I could preach on that too. Too many of us are too concerned about our careers. We ought to get concerned about what God wants us to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He'll take care of you. Amen. What is it God wants you to do? Amen. I wrote, it would be a contradiction to think of saints as sinning habitually and continuing, continuing to live in a sinful lifestyle. Amen. A habitual sinner. Kind of like the ones I talked about coming to the altar saying, God, forgive me, and going out the church doors and doing it all over again. They never intended to change. That's a habitual sinner. Amen. Because as soon as they're out, I've seen people walk out of the church, light up their cigarettes. I even had people wanting to open their alcohol up on the church parking lot. Amen. God forbid. Kind of thinking of that wedding that we had that one night. They brought wine into the church. We said, no, you ain't drinking wine here. We, Sister Vanessa took it in the kitchen and dumped it all down the sink. I'm sure they were madder than hornets, but that's all right. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the house of God. I hope they get some respect for the house of God. Amen. That's what we need in this, this day and age. We need some respect for the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach about that one day. Praise God. I, I'm all fired up tonight. I'm going to preach about everything. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what? I got nothing to lose. I'm getting older by the day. Amen. Half of the church is sitting home and not coming to church. And if I just got to preach to what's here tonight, then we're going to live holy. We're going to live righteous. The power's going to come down. The anointing's going to come down. And we're going to do the work in the will of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of God. I told my son the other day, hey amen, every preacher I know is frustrated about people not coming to church. And he was complaining and I was complaining. We were having a little pity party amongst ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I have them too. I said, you know what, Michael? I said, I'd rather have 60 people that are full of the Holy Ghost than 120 that are half-hearted. We're going to have a greater dimension of the Spirit and a moving of God with 60 people than we are with 120 half-hearted saints. Amen. I'm here to tell you. I, I told him, I said, I walked into church the other day and there was only half of the congregation there, but the power was there. The anointing was there. God showed up. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm here to tell us that we can join hands together. We can come into this place in one mind and one accord. And people are looking for something that is real. And we've got the real thing tonight. It's called Jesus. Hallelujah. And when they walk into this place, they're going to feel the power of God. They're going to feel the anointing of God. And the anointing is what breaks the yoke of bondage. And it's the anointing that sets the captive free. And if I got to build this thing from the ground up, we're going to do it by the help of God. Amen. 
Hallelujah. So if you're cold and you're lukewarm and different in spirit, amen, if you're not willing to repent, go find another church because we're going to be a church that's on fire for the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm just about done. 1 John 3 and 8, he says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Oh, God. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're in a church house that believes that the power of God can be manifested and the works of the devil can be destroyed. That's why I don't have an AA group in our church because they say once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. I don't believe that. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You can be delivered. You can be set free by the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Having therefore these promises. What promises? Heaven for one. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance. Having these promises. He said, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. God has called every one of us to a a life of holiness. Amen. He said, cleanse yourself. I can't cleanse you. Only Jesus can cleanse you. Amen. Amen. And I end with 1 Peter 1.16. He said, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. There's another scripture that says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Hallelujah. You think God doesn't care about how we act? And you think God doesn't care about how we look and the things that we do? Then you're fooling yourself and you've believed a lie. And the Bible says there's going to be those that believe a lie and be damned. Because the devil has deceived you. God does care. Amen. Hallelujah. There it is. Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without. If we don't have holiness... No man is going to see the Lord. I've come too far to not see him now. Amen. Amen. I've come too far to give up now. I've come too far to throw in the towel and quit now. Hallelujah. I want to be more like him. Amen. I've not arrived, church. I mean, I have wrong thoughts. I have wrong attitudes. I do things that I'm ashamed of because I'm flesh. Amen. Don't put me on a pedestal that I'm perfect. I am not perfect. I am a human being just like you. And I'll never be perfect until Jesus comes and makes me perfect. And you'll never be perfect till Jesus comes and makes you perfect. Amen. Hallelujah. But we're all striving to be more like him. Amen. I'm striving to have a personal relationship with my God. I'm striving to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm striving to let the mind of Christ be in me. I'm striving to say, God, let the thoughts and the meditations of my heart continually be upon you. Because I can confess tonight that my, my, the thoughts and the meditations of my heart aren't always on him. But they ought to be on him. Amen. So, God, do a work in me. God, 
God, cleanse me. God, wash me. God, sanctify me. God, make me what I ought to be. Hallelujah. Help me to draw closer to you. I'm continually searching for your holiness, God. I'm continually desiring to draw closer to you. I'm continually wanting to become more like you. God, lead me by your spirit. Lead me by your spirit. Help me not to give in to my flesh, but lead me by your spirit. Amen. Cultivate the fruit of the spirit in me. Help me to have love and help me to have that joy. And help me to have that peace and long suffering. Help me to pursue you. Help me to pursue your holiness. Hallelujah. 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 Can I tell you, living for God is not a burden. Amen. Living for God is not a list of rules of do's and don'ts. But living for God, when you live for him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, it's joy. He said it's joy unspeakable and it's full of glory. Hallelujah. The things that God asked me to do, he asked me to do it for my own benefit. Amen. And when I submit myself to him, amen, when I submit and I separate myself from the world and I dedicate myself to him, and when his ways become my ways, there's sweet fellowship. There's sweet anointing. There's power. Mm. Mm. There's power in this group right here. There's anointing in this group right here. The presence of the Lord is in this group right here. For he said if two or three of us would gather in his name, that he would be in our midst. I'm here to tell you, with this group right here, we can put the devil on the run. With this group right here, no devil in hell can stand against us. Amen. He said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. What am I preaching about? I'm preaching to a church today. Night, and I'm saying it's time to submit ourselves to him. It's time to draw closer to him. It's time to live the way he has called us to live. Amen. Help me to lay aside every weight and help me to lay aside every sin that does so easily beset me and help me to run this race looking unto him. The author and the finisher of my faith and my soon coming king. Stand and give him praise tonight. Stand and give him praise. I love you tonight, God. I praise you tonight. I want to be what you want me to be. I want to go where you want me to go. I want to do what you want me to do. I want to be used of you. Help me, oh God, to become more like you. Let the mind of Christ be in me. Help me to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Help me, to, oh God, to separate myself from this sinful world world and help me to dedicate myself to you. Let your power be manifested in us. Let your glory be manifested through us. Let your will be done. Help us to be a shining light in a darkened world. Help me to be a witness. Help me to be a lighthouse. Help me to be a testimony. You said that I would be read of all men for your name's sake. Help me to represent you well. Help me to lift up your name and help me to proclaim your will. I give you praise tonight. I give you praise. Come on, clap your hands to him. Give him praise tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. We love you tonight, God. We praise you tonight. Harabahashata. Haramakayandai. He toroboshata. Haramakayandai. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory. God bless you tonight. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord. Amen.